question I had was, what's been the best unexpected outcome from a decision that you've made in this kind of unconventional path where you were maybe at a crossroads, you made oh, a dude. choice, and you're so glad that you did it? Dude, uh, becoming a private chef straight up. Like, basically what happened was when I left this... Uh, this, this food truck gig, I came home and I was like, well, what am I going to do now? You know, I had just graduated. I went on like a birthright trip to Israel with some friends. I traveled around, um, doing some things, you know, I, I went to LA and lived there and had some crazy experiences, uh, worked on this food truck. Now what, like, what am I going to do? So I gotta, I gotta get a job. Right. So I was like, okay, well, you know, I did the food truck thing. It's hardcore, but I kind of want to try using my degree. You know, maybe it was a little bit of like some, my parents never pressured me and they're always super supportive, but I think I pressured myself like, oh, I got to use my degree. Like I got, you know, I had a couple internships throughout college at like public relations firms. Like I love to work like within food media again. So I was working for this. I got a job as an intern at this, uh, this like plant based, uh, like Chicago food startup called at the time it was called here. Okay. H-E-R-E, really dumb name, but, <laughs> but they were cool people yeah. and um, they took me sort of under their wing and, and the business is still around. They had rebranded since, but, and um, I was doing a lot of their digital marketing stuff and I think that's around the time when we met. Yep. Maybe it was right after, maybe it, it was, was right before. Just right after that because this is the first time I'm hearing about that right. startup. Right. Okay. So it was mm -hmm. right after yep. I bet, right just when I started after. cooking because mm -hmm. so what happened, mm -hmm. so I'm this, this kid, right, working at this company and, um, you know, a couple months go by, they take me to Florida, I go to some conventions and I'm kind of, it's kind of fun, right? I'm not getting paid much, but it's a cool experience and they said that they're, you know, going to be looking for a position for a entry level, this and that. So a couple months pass and it turns out that they say, hey, we're going to need to hire somebody a little more senior before we can hire somebody entry level like you just from a business stance. And I said, I totally understand. They're like, um, yeah, like we'd love to have you still stick around and we'd love to hire you as soon as we can. We just can't. So... Um, you know, at that point it w I was working, probably working just over minimum wage. And I was like, you know what? I think I might need to move on here. Like I'm living at home with my dad, like driving 45 minutes to this really cool part of the city, like from like the Western suburbs, just like a trek with traffic too. So, um, you know, I decided I'm going to start looking around elsewhere. And literally within that week, my friend, Sammy, the one who owned the food truck that I was with says, calls me from Malibu. She says, Hey, I'm with one of my clients right now cooking in Malibu. She's looking for a new private chef. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, do you want to do it? And I was like, no. Maybe. And I was like, you know what? No, I don't think so. But this and that. Um, I think I kind of jumbled the story. A week passed in that, within that week from the initial call. She took, like, I, I basically got the news that I wasn't going to be hired. So I call her back and I said, you know what? Screw it. Like, yeah, I'm interested. Like, what do we do? And she's like, can I FaceTime you? I'm literally, I'm literally playing like, I don't know what game, but I'm like mic'd up with my friends, like probably like a little stone. Yeah. And like my dad's like watching football. I'm like, I'm like, uh, yeah. So I like, <laughs> like throw my controller and stuff and I like run outside and it's like fall. So it's kind of cold and sure. it's windy. I like put my hoodie on and it's like scrunched up. I look like Kenny from South Park. And I'm like FaceTiming this person. She, she's with my friend, Sammy. They answer the phone. First thing she says to me, whoa. And I'm like, what? And she's like, I didn't know you'd be so young. And I was like, I, yeah, I don't know what to say to that. So I'm like, yeah. Anyways, we ended up talking. She ended up liking me. Sammy probably definitely vouched for me. And I, you know, a week passes by. I go to her house. I cook dinner for her and her husband. They like it. Um, I get hired. Do you, you remember know, what you made? Oh, man, I fucking wish. <laughs> I think it was some sort of chicken dish. My, yeah. uh, my current clients, they, they like to eat, say... Classic Americano, not yep. too adventurous. Totally. We'll say it, we'll keep it like that. Yep, so yep. Um, it was probably some sort of like blanched broccolini, some mm -hmm. sort of chicken with like a fresh sauce and maybe some like seasoned, like some starch, like sure. couscous or something. Right, I don't right, know, right. something like that. Mm -hmm. It was nothing big, but that's exactly what they wanted. Mm -hmm. They wanted somebody who can just create like simple, easy, healthy meals, nothing too adventurous sometimes maybe. Mm -hmm. But, um, in, but you know, so I did that. They liked the food. I was kind of going, I guess you can call it a la carte every like couple of weeks or I'm sorry, within the two weeks, maybe three, four times. And I told her, I was like, Hey, you know, I'm looking for something a little more permanent. If, uh, if you'd like to like hire me, like we can talk, but I'm going to have to move elsewhere, look elsewhere. If not, and pretty much like the next day she sent me a contract Whoa. and all of a sudden she's like, Hey, we'll put you on salary for this amount of money. I had never making that made that much amount of money in my life. Yeah. So I was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, um, kind of overnight I became a private chef and, uh, I realized, okay, this is a weird thing to just like kind of go from this like zero guy who's worked in restaurants his whole life, but never in the back of the house 
on a food truck to being considering him like a private chef. Mm -hmm. So that's when the comp when I got a real fire lit under my ass and I just dove into the books. I dove into the media, the videos. Yep. I think I reached out to you. That's when we that's started right. doing coaching. Yep. Yep. And um, every day since then, mm -hmm. it's just been cooking all day. <laughs> so, so when you initially had those thoughts, what were you, what gaps and what were you trying to fill gap wise? You were like, I need more creative dish ideas. I need to know how to no. pull dishes together. I need to know like the super basics, like dude, everything. everything. But starting with the basics, I'm talking. So I actually found shout out Chef Jacob Burton. If you don't know who this is, don't know. He's a YouTube guy. He's yeah. a he's a professional chef. Call yeah. him that. Sure. He works in a restaurant, and he's like kind of like uh, he does this online culinary school program. Mm -hmm. I immediately bought it, printed it. I watched all the videos. I watched like I, I practiced everything from like basic hollandaise to like. French omelets to like all the basic sort of like Western Eurocentric, you know, American culinary school type stuff. I really wanted to like do that because I'm like, you know, this complex, like where does it start? I didn't go to culinary school. Let's learn some culinary school stuff. And then I quickly realized, you know, it's more to cooking is more than just culinary school stuff and started branching out. And then I'm very sort of like, I was structured with it sort of kind of like trying to do, okay, let's get good at sauces. Let's talk about like proteins and like fast versus slow cooking methods and like how we can like how you know what the difference is and like why it works and this is all sort of laid out in this curriculum and then from there I would read other cookbooks and it was a lot of messing up um a lot of really bad stuff at first um and um you know I still that still happens to me today sometimes yeah. like sometimes you try something new and you're like this sucks mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but um that's kind of the fun the fun of it I think that there's I don't know. I, I I know I continue to give you props, but do you ever read a uh, Four Hour Chef? Uh, is that Tim Ferriss? Tim Ferriss. Yeah. I, I've heard of it. I never read it. So that was like one of my first. Um, I'll call it. I won't call it anti culinary school, but I'll call it just kind of like bucking the tradition from the sense of the first recipe he does in that book is. I'm almost positive on this. S seared scallops with like a mango apple salsa, something something, because. He was like, well, most culinary schools start you with stock making, maybe some butchery mm -hmm. and like some knife cuts. But if you make this, you get heat control. You learn how to season a salad. You learn how to do some knife cuts, basically. And those are actually like, you can do a lot more with those three foundational pieces to like practically make dinner for you and your partner. Right. You know what I mean? Or host a dinner party. Right. Then like you end up being the person that comes out of a program where it's like, all I learned how to do is make hollandaise and, and stock. And it's like, I can't do a dinner with this information. I can't serve so, just consomme. Exactly. <laughs> so like it flipped it on its head for me of like, oh, maybe the, the basics can be taught in a different way. Or like you can move things around. You know, mm -hmm. if you think of all these little individual like nodes mm -hmm. of knowledge and you can like make your foundation a little bit more practical from the jump because then you're more likely to stick with it. Cause it's like, oh cool. I can make, I have two recipes I can make with dinner now. You know what I mean? And then you, you get more excited about it versus sure. like trying to get buy-in on people of like, you need to start with stock. It's like, right. why do we have to start with stock? You know, like yeah. it's a foundation for a lot of stuff. For sure. But it's like, it's not the only place you can start, mm -hmm. you know? And I think, I just thought that was really, really interesting. That's true. Yeah. There's, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Like, yeah, it's just, there's, that's, there's a conventional way of doing things and, I mean, these days with the internet, like there's no reason that you need to start anywhere. It's just how it's done. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all roads lead to, yeah, it's some, yeah, some, something there. like that. You'll get yeah, there. yeah, totally. I, I have this question that I, that I think always leads to some cool stories and I call it like the graduation moment question. I had it when I, you know, did my first, like, I can remember the first time I did my first like hundred person banquet party huh. and I was like, whoa that was kind of cool. Like I did that. Mm -hmm. I had a moment where, um, I had a confusion moment with a client where I thought it was going to be a core stout menu. It was going to be five course core stout menu. And they're like, Oh no, we want it family style. So I needed to do like the whole tasting menu at the same time. Whoa. That was like a graduation moment for me. <laughs> and it was like, there's the there, like last you, minute. Like... Well, yeah, no. Yeah. It was like the day before the thing. And yeah. it was like, they, we want this menu, but we want it family style. Oh, and I had God. planned on like doing individual components where I could course it uh, out they're like no we want everything at the same time brutal anyways <laughs> is those moments i think are so interesting because it's like you often don't see them coming or you often don't like sign up for them but they sometimes like present themselves to you and you're like you sometimes will rise to the occasion do you have any of those like moments that you think of whether it's in private chefing or content creation or just like 
I call it a graduation moment. You can call it whatever else you want. Man, that's a good question. Um, I guess a big thing for me was just working, like starting this new position. I had always cooked for friends, for family, where it didn't really matter if you messed up a little bit, right? Like mm -hmm. you can kind of save it and you can kind of spunk it up and this and that. Um, but with when I first started this, I remember I, I probably got the job in like October of 18, right? So mm -hmm. a little while back. And um, when I first when I first had to do a dinner for like 20 people, I would say it was kind of my thing where it was like, like this big family style thing. I didn't hire any help. It was just like, you know, and looking back like 20 people, it gets a lot of people, but like, you know, it wasn't, but that was the first time I had done anything like that yeah. really. And it was like these, these people I'm like in the other room cooking, I'm making things look nice and I'm putting it out there and people are eating my food. I'm hearing the dishes clink in the other room. I'm hoping nobody's like, Oh, you know, like I'm hoping there's no allergies. I'm just like, what's going like, you know what I mean? Like, sure nervously wiping the counter down, like kind of like in the other room, like by myself, um, like wishing I had like some wine or something. But, um, I think, yeah, I think, I think it, it was a, it was a big Jewish holiday. It's a Jewish family. Yeah. So I think it was like Passover or right. something. And there were some dishes that, you know, they were like, yeah, I made the brisket myself. I made all this stuff myself. And then they were like, gave me a couple different sheets of like, you know, family recipes. I'm like, I hope I hit it on the head. Mm -hmm. Like, I know it's just a, the following a dumb recipe that I, you know, I know I made better than like their grandma or something you know but like still and um because you actually that's false you can never make it better than grandma. yeah i'm an idiot it's hard to compete that was really yeah that's <laughs> yeah, not true okay she's yeah so they, it was rolling better. over in her grave for you yeah grandma. but um you know so i just think i think just the increase in volume was just something i had never done before and i felt a real sense of accomplishment and it sort of opened the gateway like yo i can i can do this like i can do more yep you know i can do and, and i had i did like it's kind of slowly but steadily like you know i went from that 20 person dinner to um i did like 45 like a like a lunch for like a brunch for like 45 and then the weekend before a friend and i like we went in to a to a lake house and we did a bachelor party for like 15 like six foot dudes like you know three meals a day for like four days like out of this tiny kitchen and and then like but it's just you make it work and i think like that was a big moment in my career where i realized like you just even the highest level chefs just have to make it work sometimes and uh and that's something that like you know, was un unmasked that, that day. So it's, and that, that potentially, I mean, that was a great point of tying up what I'm trying to, I won't call it summarize, but I'm trying to call it like convince someone maybe that's, that might be listening. Who's just like, I have these unconventional things that are being presented to me. And I feel like a lot of people might potentially say no to those things. Cause it's like, Oh, I can't do that yet. I have to do this first. Mm-hmm. And I think you're a perfect example of like, you're going to end up learning the thing. And I think about it with the course that I'm trying to launch, right? Where it's like, present some unconventional, the same information, but present it in a way that where it's like, it's not necessarily like you don't have to pay your dues. You don't have to do the work because you still have to do the work. But it's like, why, why withhold information from hungry people who would be excited to learn it and just like would take it and run with it? And they're going to get to that place regardless. Mm -hmm. um, One way or another. Exactly. Exactly. Or you won't and you'll decide it's not for you. And that's fine because... 100% knock it off the list. I always Learn say it fast. Yeah. Yep. The better the faster the better. Mm -hmm.